Hey budget nerds! Yes, today we'll take a look at the Zima board. It's a small customizable computer similar to a Raspberry Pi, but with more processing power and a pre-installed OS that's easy to use. I'll also show you how to set up your own personal VPN using the Zima board and WireGuard, enabling you to access your home network from anywhere. The Zima board is made by the company Ice Whale Tech. Yes, they reached out and they sent two over. Yes, two, you can win one. Dump in the comments what you do with your Zima board. The winner will be chosen randomly. I'll reply to the winner's comments, so keep your eye on replies and you can just email me your home address. Just be careful. There have been people in the past that have posted as me. If you'd like to skip to the wire guard setup of this video, jump to this time. Inside the box you find some stickers, the power supply, and a few plug types to snap on to the power adapter. It runs on 12 volts at 3 amps. Digging deeper into the box you find some instructions and the Zima board, some more stickers, and finally a SATA power and data converter cable. Zima board is said to be the world's first hackable x86 single board server or computer. Instead of hackable, maybe they could use the term customizable. You can do quite a lot of things with something like this, like use it as a NAS, a router or a firewall, a home server, a VPN server, which we'll cover later, web hosting, data backup, media server, print and file server, IoT Gateway, and the list goes on. It looks pretty cool. I like the gray and the orange colors. It's passively cooled with a very large heatsink on the top. It also has a PCI Express 2.0 by 4 port, mini display port version 1.2, supporting 4K at 60 Hz, dual gigabit Ethernet, two USB 3.0 ports, and two SATA ports supporting 6 gigabits per second. It comes with a custom OS called Casa OS, which is based on Debian Linux, and according to the blurb on the back of the box, it is a simple and elegant home cloud centered around the Docker ecosystem. However, it does support other operating systems like Windows, OpenWRT, PFSense, Android, and LibreELEC, which I've never heard of. The Zima board comes in three flavors, at the time of this video, the 232, 432, and the 832. The 232 comes with a dual-core Celeron N3350 processor and 2 gigs of DDR4 RAM. The 432 comes with the N3450 quad-core Celeron processor and 4 gigs of RAM. And the 832, which is what they sent me, has the same 4-core processor with 8 gigs of RAM. It supports Intel's virtualization and transcoding of video up to 1080p and even supports decoding H.265. So the multimedia applications are there for sure. The 232 model comes in around $120, $160 for the 432, and $199 for the 832. It's certainly a bit pricier than the Raspberry Pi, but it does seem quite a bit more capable. If you need the extra processing power, or could use the I.O. and software that leans toward networking or server applications, it could be worth it. Setting it up was pretty easy. Like, super easy. Once it's hooked up, visit casaos.local in a browser from a PC on the same network, and then create your account, and you're in. At this point, you could visit the App Store to install apps to get this thing working for you. There's a pretty good selection of apps like AdGuard Home, Home Assistant, PyHole, and Plex, to name a few. And after an update, WireGuard Easy showed up on the list. Let's focus on setting that up. WireGuard is a simple, fast, and easy to use personal VPN, and it's free. You can install WireGuard on lots of devices, and Zima Board 
is certainly one of them. WireGuard Easy is a simplified version of WireGuard that has a really easy web GUI. A few years ago, I released a video about setting up port forwarding to be able to remote into a computer from outside your network. While that does work great, there are a few downsides to something like this, namely security. It's not usually the best way to go about it. Setting up a VPN solution like this is better because it can give you access to your whole network, not just a single PC. It's also much more secure, offering encryption and making it much, much more difficult for intruders to get in. Let's go through the steps right now. First, make sure your Casa OS is up to date. You can do this by going to the Settings menu in the upper left and clicking on Update on the bottom of the menu, and then click Update Now. If there is no Update button, then you're good. Next, go to the App Store and install WireGuard Easy. Note, you will need to change the WireGuard host info later on. Click Next Steps. After it installs, click on the menu button for WireGuard and click Settings. Scroll down to the WG Host section and change it to your public IP address. If you do not know your public IP address, just open up another browser tab and Google search what is my IP. Next, we'll want to log into our router to set up a static IP address and port forwarding for our Zima board. You can log into your router by visiting 192.168.1.1 in your browser, or maybe 0.1. If you're unsure or these do not work, you could open a command prompt window, type in ipconfig space forward slash all, and then look for the default gateway under your wireless adapter or Ethernet adapter, depending on which one you're using. You can find the username and password for your router in its manual, or it may be on a sticker on your router, or you could Google it to see what the default username and password are. I recommend you change them if you are still using the default. Once logged in, you'll want to head to the area of your router that shows what clients are connected, or to its DHCP section. This will look a bit different for each router, make, and model, but you can check your manual for those details or Google it. On mine, it's under LAN, then DHCP server. I scroll to the bottom and set a manually assigned IP address for the Zima board. I can leave the IP address as it already is and click Add and then Apply. Next, we'll set up port forwarding. For me, this is under WAN, then virtual server slash port forwarding. I turn it on and then click add profile. Under service name, I type WireGuard. For protocol, select both. And for external port, I type in 51820, which is the port WireGuard uses. In internal IP address, type in the static IP address you set up for the previous step. For me, it's 192.168.1.98. After clicking OK, we can log out of the router. Next, jump back to Casa OS. Click on WireGuard to launch its GUI in another window. Type in the password, which is Casa OS by default. I'm sure that can be changed somewhere. Once in, click New Client. Give it a name, and then click Create. Next. Click on the download button on the right to download your config file. We'll import this file into the WireGuard app on the computer we want to access the VPN with. Next, let's install that app. Google search WireGuard or use the link in the description to download and install the WireGuard app for your computer. I'm using Windows, clearly. Once installed, click on Add Tunnel or click the arrow button and select Import Tunnel from File. Select the file you downloaded from the WireGuard page. At this point, you can click Activate whenever you wish to connect. I tried it on a hotspot and it worked great. Lastly, let's go over how to set it up on a phone. Go back to the WireGuard page in Casa OS, click New Client, and give it a name as well. On your phone, install the WireGuard app, 
open it, click on the Add icon in the lower right, and click Scan from QR Code. Back on the WireGuard page, click on the QR Code icon, and scan it with your phone, and give it a name. Turn it on anytime you wish to connect with your phone. Yes, it's that easy. The only potential tricky part is the router part, but you could probably find a video out there about your specific router. I've wanted to do a video about HomeVPN for a while, and the Zima board, along with WireGuard Easy, made it, well, pretty easy. The Zima board isn't the cheapest, and it might not have quite the documentation or community that the Raspberry Pi might have, for example. But it does make things pretty easy, and does have a decent amount of processing power, and a ton of expandability. Just check out all the devices they have on their website. And I'm sure you're not limited to just these either. Well, if you're interested, there are a few links below. Do not forget you could win one of these from my channel. Just drop in the comments what you'd do with your Zima board and beware of imposters. Thanks for watching.